and welcome to the 15th edition of our Health and Wellbeing newsletter. We hope you're taking some time to enjoy the fantastic weather we've had of late and making the most of being outside with the sun on your face. The weather certainly seems to have raised spirits, which is long overdue. However, it's important to ensure we keep looking after ourselves and others. This month, you will hear about staying safe in summer, tips for managers around talking to their teams, the Samaritans Talk to Us campaign, Live Active Leisure's physical activities on offer, and much more. We also need your support and involvement in our learning programme. Please have a look and take part in the great new opportunities for supporting your wellbeing. Please also spread the word for colleagues who may not know where to find the health and wellbeing information and opportunities. They can go to the EDIC homepage, click on the What's On icon and book yourself in. Remember too, at the foot of the EDIC homepage, you will also find the links to e-learning and your wellbeing. Keeping connected is always important, particularly when we're not seeing colleagues on a daily basis. The pandemic has had a huge impact on all of us. We've all been dealing with the men's change to our personal and working lives, and we don't know what others are going through at work, with families or with friends. What we do know is that talking helps. That's why the Samaritans are promoting Talk to Us Month, and there are a number of ways to contact them. You can call them day or night for free on 116123 or why not email joe at samaritans.org. Writing an email can be calm and a safe way to work through what's on your mind. You can also write a letter. Sometimes writing down your thoughts and feelings can help you better understand them. You can write free posts to Samaritans Letters. And there's a self-help app to keep track of how you're feeling and get recommendations for things you can do to help yourself cope. Feel better and stay safe in a crisis. You're never alone. Remember too to keep connected with colleagues and have informal catch-ups. Remember when we used to chat on the corridor, in kitchens or even out and about in the high street? Well, why not give someone you have not had a chat with for a while a call the next time you're having a coffee break? You could call and make all the difference to someone. You can also connect with the Workplace Chaplaincy on 0131 441 2271. There's a listening ear service, which is a confidential listening service from the PKC coaches. There is breathing space on 0800 83 and NHS colleagues can access the wellbeing line on 0800 311 4191. Did you know we have a range of e-learning modules in mental health and suicide prevention? Someone we talked with recently said, I was worried about a member of the public and I didn't know what to do or say, so I watched for a bit to make sure they were okay. Would you know what to do? Have a look at the e-learning platform. Log into e-learning, select health, safety and wellbeing, and you will find a range of mental health and suicide prevention modules to support you and help you to support others. You can also access a tourist resource around mental health. The module contains a series of three educational animations aimed at informing participants about mental health and the prevention of suicide. The animation covers the areas of mental health and how to maintain this, the factors that can lead to mental distress or mental ill health, having compassionate conversations to support people who are experiencing mental distress or maybe feeling suicidal and help them seek help. This has been a difficult time for everyone, but some people have been affected more seriously so please make sure you know what to do and say if someone needs your help. And please also share information about these resources widely. Here's some advice from our Scottish Government Clear Your Head campaign. Things that you can do to help keep your head clear. It's only natural to feel nervous and even overwhelmed as things open up again, and you can get back to familiar places and experiences. We have some simple ideas you could try to help you cope better, clear your head and connect with others. Move a bit more every day. We often feel sluggish, simply from a lack of movement. Try walking up and down the stairs, dancing, gardening, or taking part in a virtual class. Even better, have a little stretch or walk outside if you can. Being in the open air can really make you feel better. And feed yourself, not your stress. As restrictions start to ease, you may find yourself looking for something different to eat or alternatives to cooking at home. If you choose to eat out or order a takeaway, try to make healthier choices where possible. The NHS Inform has some suggestions on how to make healthier diet choices during the pandemic. And drink more, water that is. Your body needs water or other fluids to work properly. 
So make sure you keep yourself topped up throughout the day, especially if you're feeling hungry, tired, lightheaded, dizzy or have dry lips. And take time to plan. Give yourself time to reflect on what's important and achievable. It can help you prioritise your goals and how you plan to achieve them. And try to ease any anxiety about going outside by making a plan for what you'll do when you leave the house. Make sure you include setting out some information for yourself, even if it's just to enjoy five minutes alone. In line with current guidance, many shops and businesses have outlined the steps they've taken. It might make you feel more confident to take a look at their plans before you head out. And then there's supporting others. Small acts of kindness can make others' lives that bit easier and give us a sense of purpose too. If you're worried about a neighbour, you could ask them if they need anything next time you're heading to the supermarket or just pop a note through the door. For more ideas on how you can spread a little happiness, visit Ready Scotland and talk to them. If you're worried that someone you care about is struggling with their mental health, talk to them. It might just be what you both need. Visit the SAMH website for advice or take a look at the Mental Health Foundation's eight tips for helping you talk to someone about their mental health. And stay in touch with loved ones. Being alone or only with a few family members can be hard. Or you might still be missing friends, workmates or other family from further afield. You might have found yourself meeting up virtually more frequently than you used to too. So make sure you keep that contact going, even when you're out and about. And staying in touch online via video chat is still a really handy option if some of your friends and family prefer to stay at home. For more tips on how to calm your mind as things get busier and how you can support others, visit clearyourhead.scot. Now that gyms have opened up again, here is some information from Live Active Leisure, who are pleased to announce that some of their venues are holding a variety of fitness sessions. At Live Active Rodney, you could take part in fitness and strength gym sessions. Bell Sports Centre are offering strength gym sessions and family badminton. At the North Inch campus, there's an outdoor junior club, but that's bookings only. And Live Active Loch Leven have a fitness gym, lane swimming, club swimming, swim lessons and family swim. And at Loch Leven Community Campus, there are fitness gym and outdoor clubs. Bredalbin Community Campus have a fitness gym, lane swimming, swimming lessons, family swim and outdoor clubs. And the same at Strathairn Community Campus. And also Live Active Blair Gowery are offering fitness gym, swim lessons, lane swimming, club swimming and family swim. So for more information, or if you have any questions, please visit Live Active Leisure's Frequently Asked Questions page on their website. Keen golfers needed. We have a request lately from another local authority who want to set up some inter-council matches. This is a great opportunity for all our keen golfers in PKC. If you would be interested in getting involved or even leading the PKC efforts, please let us know at corporateod at pkc.gov.uk and we will provide more information. There are so many ways to get fit and keep moving and you don't need to join a gym to do it. So here's some other ideas you can try. Ballet classes. Inspired by yoga, and you don't need to be a ballet dancer either. This low impact exercise combines yoga, pilates and strength training and works especially well for your core, glutes and legs and improves your posture. The Scottish Ballet offers classes online. Then there's just dance. If dancing to your favourite music doesn't appeal and you'd prefer something more structured, why not try an African dance workout with Kukawa? It looks like great fun. And mindful walking. This helps relieve stress and anxiety and bring you back to the present moment. If you need some help with this, you can listen to meditation on your phone while you're out and about. And why not find a new walking route? John Cassidy shared that he now has a map of routes within a five mile radius of his home and his plan is to try them all. Or what about hula hooping? They say you never forget how to ride a bike, but that's not true for a hula hoop. If you try it and can still do it, let us know at corporateod at pkc.gov.uk to get a special mention and even better if you send us a picture. Seriously though, apparently burns seven calories a minute while strengthening and toning your abs, hips, thighs, glutes and legs. There's even a YouTube hula hoop channel to help you decide which hoop to choose. And why not take photos on your walks? This helps make your walks more interesting. And of course, if you send your photos to corporateod at pkc.gov.uk, we can share them here. You'd be surprised how much colleagues like to see what others have been doing and where they've been. Just take pictures of whatever inspires you. Flowers, leaves, trees, grass, birds, whatever catches your eye. 
Reframing. This sounds like advice worth trying. We spend a lot of time talking about everything we have to do. You have to finish 10 things at work. You have to exercise today. You have to cook dinner for your family. Now, change one word in each sentence. You don't have to. You get to. You get to finish 10 things at work. You get to exercise today. You get to cook dinner for your family. The right perspective transforms your burdens into opportunities. And that's from James Clear, Atomic Habits. Staying safe in summer. Here's some great advice from Alison Ramsey. Summer is here and whatever you're planning, get the most from your summer by following these summer safety tips to ensure everyone has a great time without any of the dangers the warm months can bring. First of all, remember sun protection. Ensure the appropriate sunscreen is applied to all exposed skin and wear a hat and sunglasses. Stay hydrated. If you're heading out in hot temperatures, take plenty of water and stop regularly in the shade to take a drink. Enjoy barbecues safely. When cooking on the barbecue, ensure food is thoroughly cooked. Why not try some healthy barbecue recipes and seasonal salads? And limit alcohol intake. With the recent good weather and the easing of restrictions, bars and restaurants are almost back in full flow and people are meeting up with one another again. And with barbecues in the garden, we may find ourselves drinking more alcohol. Be mindful and practice being aware of the alcohol you're drinking. Consider swapping out an alcoholic beverage for a soft drink. For example, for every pint of lager, have a glass of water in between. Why not try making mocktails or have low non-alcoholic drinks instead? Information on drinking sensibly, knowing your limits and getting support if required can be found on the NHS Inform and the Council's website. Here are some workplace wellbeing tips for managers. Work-life balance. Focus on productivity over hours worked. Regularly review workloads, encourage breaks, and lead by example. Communicate openly, encourage open, honest dialogue. Check in with colleagues regularly. Remember the positives, create a mission statement, celebrate achievements and show appreciation. And be social, make time for fun, try team building exercise and schedule informal opt-in meetings. And mental health. Learn about and talk about mental health. Consider wellbeing sessions and pay attention and be ready to help. Now let's hear from some of our colleagues about what they've been up to lately. Poppy Sexton from Education and Children's Services got in touch. Poppy said, I started my modern apprenticeship in March 2020, a week after the UK went into lockdown. I was extremely grateful to be working with the council as my previous job was in the hospitality industry and I would have faced redundancy. It was slightly surreal to start work from my kitchen table. None of us knew we would still be facing the repercussions of COVID-19 a year down the line. I have never been in the office or sat at my desk, but it's been really interesting to work remotely and approach challenges creatively. Personally, studying from my SQE at home allowed me to manage my workload efficiently and I completed the qualification fairly quickly. At the end of my studies, I applied and was offered a full-time contract with my team. Although I have not met any of my colleagues face to face, I feel like it's been an invaluable experience to study for a qualification during the pandemic and making the most of an uncertain situation. Louise Young from Finance said, After spending all of December 2020 giving a will I, won't I, I finally made the decision on the 31st of December to sign up to the end to end challenge and run Land's End to John O'Groats, virtually of course. The challenge started on the 1st of January 2021 and had to be completed by the 31st of December 2021. So yes, I started on the 1st of January with a planned completion date of the 30th of June, but I managed to shave a couple of weeks off that date and I ran the last 7.1 miles on Saturday the 5th of June in the glorious sunshine. The total distance was 874 miles in 156 days, and that's running every day, which I can assure you was extremely tough at times, especially when the alarm was buzzing at 6.30am on a cold, dark, wet winter morning. Thank goodness for the treadmill in the garage. But I pushed myself and now I'm delighted with my achievement. The plan was then to rest up, but for anyone that knows me, that wasn't going to happen. I'm certainly not a fast runner, but I enjoy it, well most of the time. And if someone had said to me years ago that I'd be running the length of the UK in 156 days, I would have laughed at them. I used to hate running and couldn't run the length of myself, but set myself a challenge back in September 2015. I downloaded the Couch to 5k app on my phone. 
And honestly, if I can do it, anyone can. So if this is something you're thinking about, I would just say, go for it. Now I just need to decide what my next challenge will be. Well done, Louise, for your great achievement. And our colleague John Cassidy from the organisational development team got in touch to tell us what he's been up to over the past while. He said, Hard to believe a couple of things I thought about recently. One, it's been over a year since I set foot in a council building. And two, how did it get to be the end of June already? Working from home during the pandemic has been both a great thing and it's been tough too. Really have missed colleagues and pals I would normally see face to face on a regular basis. I've kept myself busy with running and gardening. Well, I've had to be encouraged to do gardening by the sound engineer and I've taken part in a few virtual running events. My most recent two were a 12 hour ultra marathon where we got a text message at five minutes to the hour telling us how fast we had to run in the next 60 minutes. It ended up being 52 miles in total. And running the River Tay Way with a certain Stephen Watt and setting a fastest known time record at the same time. The River Tay Way runs for 50 miles from Kenmore to Perth and it's a new walking path looked after by the Perth and Kinross Countryside Trust. It's not all been running though. I've enjoyed some wonderful walks about the local area of Perth where I live and I found new paths to explore and had a great time doing the simple things like enjoying the natural surroundings I maybe never noticed so much before. The highlight of my week though is most definitely the lockdown lounge. That's on a Friday from 12 to 1 where I get to play some tracks selected by colleagues across PKC. The wide variety of music never fails to surprise me and it always gives me a boost heading into the weekend. John is always happy to receive any type of request so please get in touch with them if you have a track you would like to hear. And finally, Kate Baden from IT got in touch to tell us a wonderful lockdown story. She said, When I was asked to write about my lockdown time, I wondered if you would expect a smug list of things we have all read about. Baking sourdough bread, taking up Tai Chi and decluttering wardrobes. Did I use the regain commuting time to do something fabulous, exercise more, eat better? Well, my own lockdown started with good intentions, but in fact, I have not baked a single thing. My wardrobes have not been emptied and nor have they grown. And on a bad day, chocolate is still my friend. Did all that media pressure make me feel bad? Have the last 15 months taught me nothing? Not a bit of it. Here's my take on some weird and wonderful slices of life since March 2020. Something unexpected happened during that first period of stay at home. I realised that I actually quite like the people I live with. One of them I'm very closely related to and she hasn't left home yet. She has her own room upstairs and we venture out for food and occasionally banter with her mother. That's me and my partner Ed. She works in housing and repairs and would usually be found on the ground floor of Pillar House. Suddenly, we were all at home at the same time, for days, for months, for over a year and counting. Ed is not bound by Bud to be here, so he's made a conscious decision to spend time with us and he's still here. The man is a saint. Blessing number one. It turns out I loved every moment spent with my daughter working beside me in the early days here at my kitchen table. I was already a proud mum, of course, but listening to her talking to her colleagues and tenants was something I could never have experienced if it wasn't for this. And blessing number two came the same time her desk arrived from a well-known online purveyor of home office goods and she moved back upstairs, relationship nurtured and ultimately preserved. And blessing number three, I love being able to close the laptop, open the back door and head out for a walk. Ed and I have walked every inch of the village we live in and climbed to ancient hill forts we didn't know existed before COVID. I spent evenings poring over my walking app, working out new routes in Perth and Kinross, especially if there was a bit of history to read up on or a geology feature that I could drag him to and enthuse over. Many a winter's day was spent walking the miles of waged roads around the Smaglen, trudging through knee-deep snow. A wonderful part of our country with a wealth of fantastic hills, tracks and history to discover. We saw so many mountain hares up there too, and were both shocked and thrilled to come face to face with a short-eared owl one afternoon as it flew up from the heather and right over our heads. What a day that was. The story of Bessie Bell and Mary Grey, which is worth a read, had us heading out for a hot and sunny wander through woodland via some standing stones to a plague grave in a secluded spot by the River Almond. Not as grim as it sounds, but peaceful and beautiful as the sun caught the blue bells under the trees and walks with friends to look for newts on Moncrief Hill. We found them in a muddy pool, they're fascinating wee things, and then enjoyed an elusive woodpecker calling as we walked back down the path. And blessing number four. 
you do not always need to hire a tradesman. You too can, if needs must, learn to pour self-levelling concrete and lay slate floor tiles. You can build a summer house and dig out a wildlife pond. If I can, you can. Pandemic skills are plenty, and who needs banana loaf? And blessing number five, the garden has never been so well looked after. It's not pristine, but then I do prefer a natural environment, and I'm chuffed to say you have no less than 14 species of birds who visit our feeders and bird bath. The pond has some insect life buzzing around and lies there waiting for frogs or maybe even our own newts to find. Oh, and I think I saw a wee vole in the long grass that fringes it, and the resident hedgehog gives us joy when it's sniffing about. Other good things. Box sets, books, community work, and lots of new recipes. I like to create, and food has been such an important part of life, something to take time over and enjoy, and make the day feel different from that one before. I really miss live music and spinning tunes between bands. I have serious Kalmak Ferry withdrawals, and I'm desperate to see the active volcano in Iceland. And of course, the missed celebrations and the missed farewells. The things I miss are all going to happen again, I'm sure of that, and it will all be okay. The final blessing. My connection to family and friends is stronger than ever. They have been a great support and they have helped me through it. We have all learned to appreciate the small things and take nothing for granted. A surprise call is all it takes. Make one now and make someone's day. Thank you to Kate for that lovely story and to all of our contributors this month. It's great to hear from others and good luck to Poppy in your new job. Please let us know if you'd like to write a few lines for the next issue. You can do that by contacting Jill Reeves by email at greeves at pkc.gov.uk. That's it for July. Have a great summer. Remember to take your annual leave and keep sending your pictures to Corporate OD and live life well at PKC and the Health and Social Care Partnership.